You see, Carl, growing up, only knew that sex was bad and that people who did it should be killed for it. You know he slept in a hole in the ground under a woodshed, right? Well, I knew that he slept in a woodshed of sorts. Yeah, well, his mother told him that was their punishment, uh, hers and his father's from God, for, for having sexual I I intercourse. Before they were married? Uh, no, I, I don't think so, just, just period, I think. And his mother told him that, that God gave them the ugliest creation he could think of. And Carl had this book, you know, this notebook, and on each page of the book he'd written Franklin chapter 4, verse number 1. He, he wrote that a couple of years ago after he learned how to write, and Franklin is his father's name. That's really odd. Ah, they're bringing him down now. I'll go prepare him for you. He's getting out today, and I told him he's going to be seeing a lot of women all the time out there. You have to make something explode to truly understand it. You have to examine the tiny particles while they're still on fire. Carl, I got to take you down to the old classroom. Mr. Woolridge wants to see you. Come on, let's go. You know, uh, do you remember when I was telling you about those people from the newspaper? Well, they want to ask you some questions uh, about your release today. Uh, they think it'd make a really interesting little story. And can you talk to them? Yeah. They're women. Well, I guess miracles do happen. He'll talk to you. I told him it might help him to see you for when he's out, I mean. Did he seem upset? No. Now, Carl will only talk to you. In other words, he doesn't want you asking him anything. No pictures, and please don't stare at him. Wait a minute. How am I going to conduct an interview if I can't ask him any questions? I'm sorry, but that's the best we're going to do. Well, let me ask you something. Why are you letting him out? I mean, what if he does it again? It happens every day, you know. You talk to the state and the doctors about that. And besides, Carl's been institutionalized since he was 13, and he's never shown any signs. Signs? Homicidal signs. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Now, will you step outside? Please. Carl doesn't like the light. Fluorescent light. Well, I reckon what you was wanting to know is what I'm doing in here. I reckon the reason I'm in here is because I killed somebody. Mm -hmm. But I reckon what you was wanting to know is how come me to kill somebody. So I reckon I'll start at the front and tell you. Mm -hmm. I lived out in the back of my mother and father's house most of my life in a little old shed that my daddy had built for me. Mm -hmm. They didn't too much want me up there in the house with the rest of them. So I mostly just sat out there in the shed looking at the ground. I didn't have no floor, but I had me a little old hole dug out to lay down in. They had me a quilt or two to put down there. My father was a hardworking man most of his life. Not that I could say the same for myself. I mostly just sat out there in the shed and tinkered around with a lawnmower or two. Went to school off and on from time to time. But the children down there, they made quite a bit of sport of me and made fun of me quite a bit. And some of them roughed me up sometimes. 
So mostly I just sat out there in the shed. My daddy worked down there at the sawmill, down at the planer mill for an old man named Dixon. Old man Dixon was a very cruel feller. Didn't treat his employers very well. Didn't pay them too much of a wage. Didn't pay my daddy much of a wage. Just barely enough to get by on, I reckon. But I reckon he got by all right. They used to come out, one or the other of them, usually my mother, and feeding me pretty regular. Mm -hmm. So I know he uh, at least got by well enough to where I could have mustard and biscuits three or four times a week. Mm -hmm. Well, old man Dixon, he had a boy named Jesse Dixon. Mm -hmm. Jesse was really more cruel than his daddy was. He made quite a bit of sport of me, and taking advantage of the young girls in the neighborhood quite a bit. Mm -hmm. He used to say that my mother was a very pretty woman. He used to say that quite a bit from time to time when I was down there at the schoolhouse. And anyway, I reckon you want me to go and tell you what happened, so I reckon I'll tell you. I was sitting out there in the shed one evening, not doing too much of nothing, just kind of staring at the wall, waiting on my mother to come out and give me my Bible lesson. And I hear the commotion up there in the house. So I run up on the screen in porch there, looked in the kitchen window, and I seen my mother laying there on the floor that ain't clothes on him. Jesse Dixon was a laying on top of her, having his way with her. Yeah. Well, I just seen red. I picked up a Kaiser blade that was sitting there on the porch. Some folks called it a sling blade. I call it a Kaiser blade. It's just a long wood handle, kind of like an axe handle. Long blade on it, shaped kind of like a banana. Sharp on one edge and dull on the other. What the highway boys used to cut down the weeds and whatnot. And well, I went in the kitchen there and I hit Jesse Dixon upside the head with it and knocked him off my mother. Well, I don't reckon that quite satisfied me. So I hit him again with it in the neck with a sharp edge and just plumb near cut his head off. Killed him. My mother, she jumped up in there and she started hollering, what did you kill Jesse for? What did you kill Jesse for? Well, come to find out. I don't reckon my mother minded what Jesse was doing to her. I reckon that made me matter than what Jesse had made me. So I taken this Kaiser blade. Some folks called it a slang blade. I call it a Kaiser blade. Now, I hit my mother upside the head with it. Killed her. Mm. Some folks has asked me if I had it to do over again, would I do it the same way? I reckon I would. Mm. Anyhow, they seen fit to put me in here, and here I've been for a great long while. Mm. I've learned to read some. Took me four years to read the Bible. I reckon I understood a great deal of it. And wasn't what I expected in some places. I slept in a good bed for a great long while. Now they've seen fit to put me out of here. Mm. They tell me they're setting me free today. Uh, anyhow, I reckon that's all you need to know. If you need to hear some more details, I reckon I can tell them to you. I don't know if that's enough for your newspaper or not. And anyhow, I reckon that's what you'd want to know. Will you kill again, Carl?
I don't reckon I got no reason to kill nobody.